Duck hunters love to tell stories about hitting the migration just right and limiting out. However, that's not always reality. Duck hunting is hard work, and the untold story is one of missed shots, of a broken gear, <laughs> and hopefully a few laughs. But if you put in the time and play your cards right, Pintails. a northerly wind might bring some birds your way. Never works out how you want it to. I'm Sean Weaver, a former hunting guide, TV producer, and a guy who's just obsessed with waterfowl hunting. But limits of birds aren't what keep duck hunting alive, and that's what I want to talk about. This is Duck Lore. Michigan, the Great Lakes State. Michigan is both a breeding and wintering ground for ducks and geese, making it a very important part of the Mississippi Flyway. It has as many licensed duck hunters as other Mississippi Flyway staples like Missouri and Louisiana, is steeped in waterfowl tradition, and has more public land than any other state east of the Mississippi. From wood ducks and geese on its thousands of lakes and ponds, to sea ducks and divers on the four different great lakes it borders, the variety here is astounding and brings to light just how cool of a place it is to be a waterfowl hunter. But more specifically than just Michigan, Steve and I are in the Upper Peninsula with my friend Dylan Graves. Dylan and I met in Kansas on a late season duck hunt, but he's a local here. When he told me about the big numbers of bluebills and redheads you'll get on the three Great Lakes bordering the UP, I had to come see it for myself. Hey! You wanna talk about nostalgia, man? It's that cloud of blue smoke. <laughs> yeah, that smell right there. <laughs> I need a four stroke. He's in two strokes, man. Steve is also a Michigan native and even went to college here in the UP for a stint. But he never had a chance to hunt out of a layout boat for divers on the big water. So he's here to experience something he'd only ever heard stories about. You know, uh, I've never done this. No? No, I've never, I've never, uh, I've never been in a layout boat. You can't really uh, compare it to anything else. It's just its own beast. Uh, well, getting set up for it is quite the... Yeah, I mean, it's not just something you can casually get into. Right, yeah, and you don't just one day be like, oh, I'm going to start layout hunting. It's a different type of shooting. Uh, you know, you're laying right in the decoys, you know, the birds are right in your face. It's, you know, divers, so they're fast and yeah. you'll, uh, you'll burn some shells, that's for sure. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. You got a plan on a couple misses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, what's the game plan here? See if we can locate some birds and if we find some good birds, you might uh, drop the boats in and try and do some shooting. Well, hopefully the, the birds play nice. Yeah, let's find some birds first, huh? It's late October, which is a pretty typical time to start targeting divers. Much earlier, and the migration hasn't really started. Too much later, and you can run into weather that can keep you off the Great Lakes for days at a time. While no migration is predictable down to the day, divers are what many would call a calendar migrator that migrates around the same time each year based on the shortening daylight hours. Some common examples of diver ducks you'll find here in Michigan are bluebills, buffleheads, redheads, canvasbacks, and ringnecks. How many feet of water you usually find them in? So they'll roost out uh, in the deep water, and then they come in to this bay in the shallower water like 10 to 15 mm. and feed. Yeah. So we'll be hunting in 10 to 15 feet? Somewhere right in there. Yeah. You want to uh, take a look over here? It looks like there's some birds, maybe. Whereabouts? It looks like a raft over there, but I can't oh, quite tell. Oh, yeah. You see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's okay. some birds there. Yeah. You want to you wanna slow down for a second? Oh, my goodness. Look at all these ducks over here. <laughs> you ever seen anything like no. that? Never that many. Where's those binos? Right here. Oh my goodness. See what they are. Typically year to year, this is a really good spot for redheads. So I'm gonna assume a lot of them are red. It looks like bluebills and redheads from what I can see. Damn. 
Yeah, hopefully they bounce around and decide to come on back. You're banking on that bump them out of the spot and for some reason they like this spot and all this yep. and they're going to come back to it. Yep. In a cornfield, it like makes sense to me. Like, oh, there's yeah. this cornfield with a bunch of corn that they like. Yeah, they're probably unconcentrated. Some kind of shrimp and mussels. Something, and yeah. Kind of. With our spot picked out, we get started setting up. First, we'll launch the layout boat and try to get the anchor good and dug in. Yep. Our decoys are based on where the boat yeah. settles in the waves. Then it's time to feed out the decoys. We have close to 100 diver decoys that are attached to a handful of mother lines via tuna clips. And these mother lines each have their own anchor. Each line looks like, well, a line of decoys, and you can't help but think it looks a lot like a runway. We'll take turns shooting with one guy in the layout boat while the other person stays on the tender boat. Here's a radio and a live jacket. Good luck. The tender boat backs off three or 400 yards to give the ducks some space to work the decoys and watches through binoculars. If the shooter gets a bird down, the tender boat will drive up and pick up the floating bird. These layout boats are specifically designed for this open water hunting, but especially diver hunting. See, typically, divers fly low across the water, not getting an overhead view of your boat. On top of that, divers aren't usually known for their wariness like a mallard or a pintail is. From a wave level view, the low profile sides and slate gray color make it almost like a rock as it bobs in and out of the waves. But from above, like how puddle ducks fly, they can look right down in the boat and see the hunter in plain view. While waiting for ducks to decoy, Steve will lay on his back in the boat to avoid creating a silhouette. Once they come within range, he'll sit up and shoot. It's much easier said than done while bouncing in the waves. Well, they got some flying in right now. Oh, he got one. Looks like just the one. Cool, we're on the board. Hey, I saw you knock that one down. We're gonna come and pick it up for you. Nice shooting. Oh, Mark said it looked like a scoter. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be cool. Scoter would be real cool. Sea ducks, not on the sea. Scoter are a true sea duck, like live out on the open ocean but they use the Great Lakes, so if what Steve shot is a scoter, hopefully it's dead because they can dive real deep, swim a long ways when they're crippled. It looks like his head's up. Head is up? Looks like it. Shit, head is up. Oh yeah. Up. You see it, Sean? Yeah, I do. Its head's not up, though. Which one are you seeing? Where are you looking? I'm looking oh, right in front of the boat. There's two. I don't know if it's crippled. Oh, I guess it is. Ah. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't think that duck was crippled. It, we never shot at it, it just laid down. And As it turns out, the duck we assumed was crippled was an entirely different duck than the one Steve shot. Spotting ducks in these waves can be a real challenge, but it brings up an important point. Shooting divers until you know they're dead is essential, because if they're only wounded or winged, they can dive and end up hundreds of feet away from the last place you saw them. It turns into a real wild duck chase. That is so cool. Oh yeah. Sea duck there. White winged scoter. White winged scoter. So cool. Despite the massive waves of ducks we saw coming in, the rest of the afternoon is slow. For whatever reason, maybe the sun or the mild temperatures, the ducks just aren't moving around. Eventually, we decide to call it a day. 
it could be just they've been over hunted. You know, it could yeah. be the same birds that have been here for a while and they're just starting to get a little bit stale. Yeah. The guy's been pounding on them. And, and, uh, so you think we have to at least try to find some other birds, try to find something not so stale? I don't think it would hurt. Right. You know. Yeah, I agree. It's a bummer to be that close to that many birds and then like not be able to do anything. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. If they're not flying, they're not flying. Exactly. Yeah. The next morning, we head to a new area on Lake Huron, hoping to find birds that are a little more active or at the very least, a little more spread out. This is where Lake Michigan and Lake Huron I guess this side of the bridge is here on, and that side of the bridge is Lake Michigan. Yep. The, the Straits of Mackinac. They used to have a lot of gunfights up here, man. Really? Naval battles, big gunfights, shooting cannons at each other. <laughs> like us duking it out with the British, and the British duking it out with the French. Yep. And, oh, everybody's always gunfighting up here. There's birds in the air. Probably. It's already feeling better than yesterday, man. Yeah. Just see some ducks flying. Yeah, they're actually moving around. You're not seeing as many, but... I mean, that's definitely... It's huntable. I mean, birds are kind of bopping around. Do you try to sit right where they're sitting right now? Or do you sit off a ways and hope they trickle to you? I think if you sit off, you'd be more apt to almost catch ones like coming this way. Yeah. Let's try it, man. All right, I'm down. If you think it's a worthy setup. I think so. A little lighter today. <laughs> lighter putting it out. You want your whole bag? Yep. Hey, you boys. All right, shoot them up. Old swap. Nice. Oh! Shoot that one right in front of you again. Heck yeah, Just man. Dying. First duck. No, no, shoot that, please. I don't want to see it's an old swap. <laughs> Is it dead? No, no, shoot it, shoot it. Just like that, two ducks in the bag. It's a small bird, man. Oh, yeah. They're not near as big as I expected them to be. I want him to get some bluebills too. So that there's a young drake, or is that a hen too? Uh, let's see. I think that that one might be a young drake. There are about 20 different species of ducks you'll find with regularity in the Great Lakes region, and using the term diver duck might be a little vague. What we are really hoping to find are ducks in the poachered family, which include bluebills, canvasbacks, ringnecks, and redheads. While canvasbacks would be the ultimate prize, redheads also have a reputation as great table fare. Have you found redheads to be better eaten than bluebills? Uh, I'd say really see close about the same. Yeah. Definitely the best of the divers, for yeah. sure. Those are divers to me, you can throw them right into a pan, you know, yeah. some onion and garlic and mm -hmm. eat. And of course, canvas back if you ever are lucky enough yeah. to kill them. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Whoa. Sweet, man, you got another one. Oh, that was a merganser. The sea ducks, specifically white-winged scoters and long tails, are moving good today and Steve is shooting extremely well, given it's his first time in a layout boat. The old merganser. Good old merganser. Sardines. Oh, oh he got one. Nice. We'll take one. Yep. Should have had two. 
but one is pretty damn good. Right like that. Perfect. Straight ahead now. Oh, please have some color on the bill. Yes, no? Not quite, eh? Still a really cool bird. Yeah, it's a young drake. God, their feathers are so thick. John, you want to take a turn? I'm good right now. I'll give you one more go. All right. I still want you to get one of those flocks of bluebills in. Oh, yeah, buddy. The second I jump in there is when the bluebills are going to show. Real nice one this time, it appears. Heck yeah, man. Steve's shooting some birds. Yeah, he is. Heck yeah. Love it. It's fun to watch the delay. It's fun to watch the delay. Oh, nice. Another long tail. Yep. It's been a really great day. But as afternoon approaches, we get wind advisories and decide it's best to call it and get some birds cleaned. Tomorrow, I'll take a turn in the layout boat and hopefully get a chance at both some poachers and some sea ducks. Well, that was a little better than yesterday. Yeah, man. A little better every day. Yeah. That means tomorrow. That's right. right. <laughs> if you do the math, tomorrow's going to be great. The next morning, we're up extra early and headed to a spot that Dylan knows well. The plan is that the birds rafted up deep will come into the shallows for their morning feed. Oh, they should, a lot of them should come from this way off that big water, come right into this bag. Nice. Look that way. See you guys in a couple hours. Yeah. Well, I hope it won't be that yeah, long. Yeah. We'll have to come by. There is something really peaceful about bobbing around in a layout boat, especially when you're not bothered by ducks decoying and having to shoot your gun. After a couple of hours without so much as a duck to think about shooting at, it becomes obvious that my first day in the boat is going to be a big fat goose egg. I just don't feel like sitting here staring at empty skies when we're not just not seeing birds on the water or up in the air. Isn't, right. isn't uh, valuable usage of our time. Yeah. So let's let's pick it. We better go scout because yeah. that was a butt kicking. Not as intended. It's downright romantic down here, buddy. <laughs> Coming down here to look at the waves. <laughs> you can see a lot of ducks on the water. Oh, there's like a line of heads every time a wave Yeah, rolls. you got to watch. The minute you set, your brain processes their presence, they're like down in the waves. They're here. After using our afternoon to scout and look for new spots to hunt, we decide that our best bet is to go back to the straits. There's ducks there, and they seem to bounce around more than any of the other ducks we're finding. We're like right there. We're real close. Oh, yeah. It's our last day on the Great Lakes and my last opportunity to bag some ducks. At this point, I'm just hoping for one chance at the giant flocks of redheads and bluebills we've seen this week. See you guys after I shoot some redheads. Knock on wood or aluminum. Man, this isn't so bad in October, but I can't imagine how brutal this is doing this in like December, January. 
There's just no way to stay dry. You would be so cold. Right here. Finally, got a duck. Man, I never saw that duck coming. My first long tail. Gosh, that was a lot of work for one duck. Catch of the day. Definitely the most work I've put in to shoot one duck. On the left. I <laughs> got my first and second scoter in one shot. The scoter curse is over. <laughs> sure is. Sure is. I shot those in one shot. Really? Yeah. Huh. Would they sneak in on you again? I'd been laying down the whole time. And I was like, okay, I gotta sit up just to scan around, you know? And I wasn't sitting up for two seconds and there they are. <laughs> yeah, they'll get you. What an adventure this has been. I've bobbed up and down in this boat for pretty much two full days, and I think three birds is all Michigan's gonna give me this time. The Great Lakes definitely humbled me a little bit. Taught me a little more respect for diver hunting. I've always had this kind of opinion of diver hunting as maybe physically daunting, but nonetheless like easy hunting. That first morning we'd roll out here and bump 10,000 ducks. I'm like, oh, perfect. We're gonna shoot ducks every day. Hardest I've hunted for the fewest birds in quite a while. While we didn't get the birds I had hoped for, I came away with a little more understanding of diver hunters and why they're often so dedicated. The rolling waves in the lap of the water against the boat is a hunter's lullaby. And I witnessed a part of nature many don't get to see. The hardiness of some ducks not just live, but thrive in the demanding waters they call home. <laughs>